Hello everyone, today I'll be sharing with you another free alternative to Mid Journey and it's called Tensor Art. And Tensor Art comes with a free daily credit of 100 credits. So every day that you visit the site, the credit gets refreshed. However, the credit does not roll over. So if you did not use the credit on a particular day, it doesn't get rolled over to the next, right? So just ensure that you come to the site regularly if you want to maximize the full capability of the free credits that's provided to you. So Tensor Art is based off Stable Diffusion, which is different from Mid Journey. And just like any other Stable Diffusion kind of image editor platforms, you have a lot of checkpoints or in this case models for you to use as well as LoRa's, right? So when we are on the main page, we'll be able to see the available LoRa's as well as the page uh, displays the checkpoints that you can use or in this case, the models that you can use. However, what I find is that you need to scroll down slightly lower because it start off with some of the recommendations. You just need to scroll down a bit lower until you find this part that says where you can see the filters here. What you like to do is to click on the filters option and make sure that you're just selecting a checkpoint because you are supposed to choose the checkpoint that you want so you can generate an image that is similar to what you're looking at. If not, then you'll be looking at both LoRa's and checkpoint, right? But an alternative is also for you just straight away to go to the workspace. This is where you can start creating the image, but by looking for the checkpoint, and selecting a base checkpoint or a base image model that you want to use, you'll be able to see some examples or some samples that's been created by other users that you can use and try it out on your own. So let's say for example, here I'm using the Duck H V1 and I'm going to click on that. So I'll be able to see some of the sample styles of artworks that I have here as well as some of the other users generated art and as you can see it's pretty interesting as well as you scroll further you're gonna get something that you might like as a starting point so for example if this particular art is something that you want to try out you can just hover over it you can click on it or you can straight away click on the remix button that appears so once you click on it you'll be able to see what are the checkpoints as well as the LoRa's that is being used as well as the settings and you can copy that or you can just click on the remix button and what it does is it copies exactly all the parameters and settings that was used to create a particular image including the prompts the negative prompts as well as the various other settings right but then for those of you who are new to stable diffusion let me just share with you about some parts that you must know in stable diffusion for you to create something that is good so the first part is something known as the basic model or something known as the checkpoint when you click on the drop down arrow you'll be able to find the list of checkpoints that you can try out in tensor art so there is a lot of checkpoints here and with different styles so depending on the art style that you want you'll be able to choose a style that is closest to the kind of artwork that you want to create so that is for the checkpoint next is we have laura so laura's think about it like a fine tuning of the checkpoint so when you've selected a checkpoint that you want next you're going to choose the laura that might go with it and the laura's we always try to find a laura's that is close to the base model that we're using for example if you are using a base model that is an anime then you try to find a laura that is more cartoonish and animish if it is a basic model that is of realistic image of uh, maybe realism fusion here you want to choose a laura that is a bit more realistic as well so what you can do is when you're doing all these generations be able to add a number of LoRa's together so in a sample that we just chose just now we have our basic model and we have four different LoRa's that is used to fine tune or to tune the image to the way that you like again everything is a trial and error so it's really up to you to explore and find which kind of Pixel models as combined with the LoRa's 
will make an image that you really like. You can also remove the LoRa's if you don't want to. So because we just copied a prompt, settings based on the image that we saw just now. So we also have the prompts here and the negative prompts. So unlike me, Journey, Stable Diffusion models require the negative prompt. So negative prompt helps to guide the AI to do... Or, so the negative prompts will help to guide the AI to remove all the parts that might not look so good it won't be 100% accurate but as much as possible you try to include the negative prompts so that the AI would use it as much as possible and next we have the aspect ratio so depending on the size and ratio that you want so if you want a square you can just click on the one one so the landscape three two portrait as well or and you can click on custom for example you know 1024 by 1024 is going to be a square so i'm going to put this to 728 or whatever number that you want to maybe i'm just going to put this at 720. for sampling method sampling method is a way in how the ai uses the algorithm based on the sampling method to generate the image so in tensor art we have a few sampling methods most of the time we are going to use Euler or DPM plus plus 2M Karas. These are like the two more commonly used one, but you can also try a lot of the other sampling methods that's available here. For the sampling steps, the higher the number of the sampling steps, then the more detailed the image gets or the quality gets slightly better. So in Tensor Art, you have up to 60 steps. Most of the time, 25, between 25 to 40 steps is more than enough. For the CFG scale, this will determine how closely the AI will try to generate an art based on the prompt that you provide. So the higher this value, then the close, as they will try to generate something that's as close as possible to your prompt but if it is this is lower then it has a bit more creative freedom most of the time for this cfg scale we try to put between 12 to 20 i'm just going to put the midpoint here the max is 30 for tensor art i'm just going to put the midpoint of 15 right so it will try to follow the prompt as well as have some creativity to add on its own elements and style and feel for the seat, we're just going to leave it for empty unless you know the seat number. So a random seat means that each time you generate the AI image, it's going to look slightly different. So it's, it's just going to randomize it each time it generates the AI. But if you key in a particular seat, it will try to stick to the angle and the style that is tagged to the particular seat. So the seat is like a reference point in the training data in the data set for this particular model that we have chosen dark edge so it is like a reference point inside the training data so each time you use a similar seed you're going to get something that is almost similar in terms of look and feel so most of the time we're just going to leave it empty or minus one depends on the platform they're using so it'll be randomized so under the advanced settings if you click and it the clip skip is more about color contamination so you just want to keep it at about two or so that is like the recommended number we're just going to leave it as that next is we have something known as a high rise fix so the high rise fix will help to upscale the image a certain level and there is an upscaler in terms of how it's being upscaled so most of the time we try not to use the high rise fix straight away until we reach to a point that we know this prompt is going to work very well and you're going to apply the high rise fix so for me i can choose to leave it on here and we can also choose the denoising strength so the denoising strength means is when you upscale sometimes there are certain elements that is being added or removed depending on how detailed you want it to be so the higher the denoising strength then the more creative the ai can be if not then you're just going to leave it at the midpoint which is a balanced version and at detail and a detailer model helps to remove some of the bad parts so in this case the one they use for is the man for face there are various detailers that is available for face for hand as well for the person so sometimes when you're generating ai art 
you have a challenge in trying to get like the expression or the eyes might look a bit weird, the fingers, additional fingers, missing fingers. So the A detailer helps to ensure that you try to fix this as much as possible. You can also provide a prompt over to the detailer and add a Laura if you want as well. For me, is I'm just going to leave it as it is because we chose a sample image and I just want to see how it's going to look like. And the uh, model confidence threshold, we're just going to leave everything exactly the same. And here, as we can see, it's going to cost us 8.771 credits. So, depending on the settings that you switch on and then on and off, here it will affect the number of credits you're going to use. Right, so, here, once I remove the high res and the A detailer, I will only be using 0 0.9 credit. When I switch on the high res fix, I'm going to use 3.3. And when I switch on the A detailer, I'm going to use 8.71. So for me, I guess I'm going to switch off these two for now. I'm not so sure how the image is going to turn out like. And we are going to see that in a while. So here the prom. Chaos, Warrior, Masterpiece, Absidus, Absidus Detail, fine. Undivided 2D, Solo. Maybe I want to place here Chaos, Cyberpunk, Warrior. Or Samurai Warrior. Let's see. Because my NFT is uh, Samurai. And I'm going to add the bunny ears as well. Let's just see how this is going to look like for us. And just going to keep everything exactly the same. So I'm happy with what I'm going to generate. I'm just going to keep the rest of the settings that is copied from the image that we like and I'm just going to click generate and it's going to cost me 0 0.9 credits and let us see alright so pretty much we are unable to use so much LoRa and a control net so if you are facing with this then all you can do is we can just remove some of the LoRa's here maybe we're going to remove the Meta AI or the Pika Super Realistic Detail Eyes I'm just going to keep these two let's try whether it works for us. All right, let us see. So on the free model, unfortunately, you just be able to generate one image each time. So it does take some time for you to create the image that you want. Right. But then there's just the limitation for us right now using the free model. taking a while to generate most of the time if you are on a free model your speed might be a bit throttled and this is the image that we are getting interesting so they did get the uh, bunny yes right and um, samurai and they have like this particular armor quite interesting look so without the other options as available to us I guess it looks slightly different. Not so sure whether I apply the high res fix, whether this is going to fix anything. Let me just try that and generate. And again, no, it doesn't allow us. So as you can see, we selected an image that is meant or created for... So as you can see, we selected an image that is created by a pro user. So quite a number of the settings you are unable to use just as how we want. And if that's there is one way for us to create an image inside of Tensor Art. So I'm just gonna close here first. All right, and this is the original image that we try to sample from, but quite a number of these things we are unable to apply because we are on the free version. But now let us try to create something from scratch. I'm just gonna go to the workspace right now. This is uh, back to where we are. I'm just gonna remove all the original settings that we do have and I am going to use the images as well as the prompts that I have so this is the prompt that I'm going to use that is based of my own nfts which look like this hang on
So this is how my NFT looks like. So I've created a prompt that will hopefully create something that is similar based on the NFT that I have right here. And I'm just uh, going to change and reset all the settings that I don't want. I'm going to disable the high-res fix and the e-detailer. And what I'm going to do now is to select the basic model. So when you are creating something from scratch, you can go to the basic model, select a model that you like instead of uh, basing off the sample image that's created by someone else. So in this case, let me scroll down a bit. Maybe I'm going to try out Marubix 99. I'm just going to click on that. So that is the model or the checkpoint that we're going to be using. I'm not going to use any LoRa this time around. The VA, I'm just going to leave it to automatic. This is the prompt I inputted. The negative prompt was used from the previous round. So I think I'm just going to keep it as it is. But for the settings that I have, I'm just going to make it 1024 by 1024, which is a square. The sampling method, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Or if I want to, I can change it to Euler. Later on, I will try it. And see how it's going to work. CFG skills take into 15. Sampling steps is how the quality is going to turn out. So I'm just going to give it 25. CFG skill is how closely the AI is going to follow the prompt. So I'm just going to leave that at 15. And I'm just going to generate. It's going to cost me 0 0.9 credits. And we shall see. Because Mid Journey is only paid version right now, so we have to look at various alternatives for us to create the AI art based on our vision. So there is a lot of trial and error and a lot of testing. If you don't get something that you want straight away, then you just have to give it a try and keep on trying and try to find what is the gop, what is a good prompt and what is the balance for that. And there we have it. This is the artwork that's being generated. So I'm just going to click on it. So we do have the hair that is similar, the uh, gray hair. We have the bunny ears. No, but looks like a female to me. And there's something, some issues with the hand here as well. So not the best, but it is quite interesting and it is good enough. I mean, like this is like an artwork that can be created by someone that is um, still trying out drawing and artist so it's pretty decent so what we can do is that if it is not close enough to what we want we can also change the model type so that's always the first thing when you look at maybe i'm going to try lucid dream realistic instead i'm just going to click on that and i'm going to change here uh, the word mail is ready here so hopefully I'm, we're going to generate a mail because we can only generate one image at a time so we are a bit crippled in terms of the variation that we can see each time around. So I'll try not to change too much of the settings. So I'm just going to keep it as it is right now. The only thing I changed was the model type or the checkpoint. And I'm just going to generate again, which is costing me 0 0.9 credits. It'll take a while. All right, so now we have a 3D looking version of our samurai here. So we do have that white silver short hair. We It is a male and we have a very nice samurai armor in red color. And we do have the bunny ears up here as well. So I find that this is quite interesting in terms of the art standpoint and the hands are not the best but it's not bad either we can see that one two three four fingers here as well as the thumb and as we know ai is still not very good in eyes hands feet or anything that is very intric intricate or complex so i'm quite happy with what i have here so if i'm gonna click on this we are able to remix this to create something that is some similar or we can use the upscaler to resize 
and i'm just going to click on the upscaler here so i'm just going to resize by two times the noising strength just going to keep it at 0 0.5 so the higher this is then there will be like new kind of additions that is being added so i'm just going to generate it here and again we are unable to do so because uh, it is a pro only so in this particular tool we are only able to create up to 1024 by 1024 in a square version and if you're happy with this, you can just right click and can just save the image as into the downloads that you want. Yep, and it has been downloaded. So that is the second way that we can create an image in TensorArt. So the first is for us to find a model and find an image that's created by someone else and we try to copy their style next is for us to just click on the workspace and create everything from scratch just like how we did just now the third way that we can use tensor art is for us to use image to image and in this case we can go back to the workspace and just clear everything that we have here right i'm sorry we actually have a generation count at the bottom so maximum we can do is two we can change the generation count to two right at the bottom here for this particular sample i'm just going to use exactly the same model which is lucid dreams not going to add any laura going to keep the fva to automatic the problem we're going to keep the same but the difference is that I am going to try out the image to image option. So what does the image to image option does for us is you can provide the AI with a base image of what you want to generate or something that you like. What you can do is I'm going to use the NFTs that I have. I'm just going to click it and drag it into this particular box. So the denoising strength is the higher it is, then the more creative it can get, but still be able to maintain. So if this is zero, that means there is the generation image is going to be almost the same as this, but I want to have some creative freedom. So I'm going to increase this to about 0 0.75 and see how it's going to turn out like. The rest of the settings, I'm happy with a square, sampling steps, 25, CFG scale, 15, and clip skip is the same at 2. And I've already changed the generation count to 2 instead of 1. So we can see a bit more variety. So it's going to cost me 1.8 credits each time. And I'm just going to generate this and let us see what kind of artwork we are going to get. So as you explore a lot of the available AI image generator out there, depends on the options that you have. Some of them are a bit limited because you're on a free plan, but at least you are getting free credits every day. So you can generate something almost every day. So the better you are and knowing which are the settings, the models you're going to use, the prompts you're going to use, and that will help you create better AI art each time so you do not waste the credits here for the day. So here we are having something that is similar to what we uploaded but then it looks a bit more feminine to me but comparing this to what we uploaded just now as you can see there are differences but then there are similarities as well in terms of angle, in terms of style. So if you're going to change this to a different model this is going to look different as well. Let us look at the second generator image. Alright, this is uh, looking slightly different. Comparing this to our NFTs that we have here or the base image that we provided. But there are still similarities in terms of uh, the how the hair looks like, how the ear curls and the sword at the back. So everything is for us to try and explore everything is a try and error and you if you find something that you like you can just right click on it and you can save the image so there's one way 
that's uh that so that's the third way in how we can generate AI art inside of tensor art the one last option is I'm just gonna change the model to something different maybe I'm gonna change it to an anime god XL and I'm gonna keep everything else the same and I'm gonna generate it one more time Taking a while to generate. And using a different model, the generated image looks a bit more anime ish, but it still keeps the kind of look and feel, the angle, the shape. Right, and here as well. Oh, this is uh, looking quite nice. No, so the AI will interpret the image based on the model and uh, because the model is trained by a certain set of images so it's going to generate a different kind of look and feel compared to different models so if you don't like the look and feel that you have earlier you can use it and change it to a different model to see whether it is something that you would like Last but not least, I'm going to share something else which is known for the, which is known. So another way for us to control the look and feel of our image is to use something known as the control net. But unfortunately, it's not available for XDXL models. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it into a model. Let me find something that is a bit more well used uh, let me see perhaps i will just use lucid dream realistic and i'm going to add a control net so a control net will allow us to further fine tune in terms of the look and feel the angle and how the image is going to be generated so there are two mainly used control net out there first is Kenny so the Kenny will try to find the contours the the lines inside the image and generate a black and white graph with it and be able to use that to create something that is similar for open pose it will try to replicate the pose that is given in the particular image as you can see here so for our case right now I'm just gonna choose the open pose version so I'm just gonna select that and I'm going to click and drag the pose that we have or sample pose that we want into the image right and it will create like this reference points on where the various parts of the person is like where the elbows are where the feet are where the knees are where the joints are and I'm just going to confirm that so there is a control step uh, between one to two so i'm just going to keep it to one so it'll still be have some creative freedom for the ai to create something and since we also have the image to image and we have the open pose so the goal is to see if we can get this particular image in this particular pose and let us wait and see And unfortunately, we are unable to 
get it to follow the post so much so what we can do is we can just remove this and we're gonna use it based on a prompt and we're gonna have the open post following this particular post and let's try generating it again so once you have an image to image it will try to first use the image that is provided as the base and sometimes the open post doesn't re really work well so what you can do is you can just remove the image to image and just generate something based on the prompt that you created so the more detailed your prompt is to look closer to the look and feel of the image that you want then hopefully be able to generate something that is nice Taking a while to generate. And let us see. All right. Not really the best in terms of generation. And I will explain why in a and explain why in a while. As you can see, it tried to follow the post, but a lot of the limbs are a bit off and such. That is because it's a very complex post. We're gonna click on it. As you can see, it is holding a sword in this manner so one of the challenges that ai face not only for tensor art but almost any other ai that is based on stable division even in mid journey they have challenges with complex poses and in this case when it's holding things and such so the image writer will get confused in what's the best way to generate this right because this is not a very common pose and that is why it's having some challenges but as you can tell it's trying to keep to the angle that you have and the angle of the hands as well but then we have some other issues with generation elsewhere but as you can see it tries its best and you're never going to get it right at the same time so you can also change some of the settings that you have here and hopefully it will make your image better so everything is really a try and error at, at the point that ai is right now it is a lot of try and error there is no one click button for you to get something that's nice unless of course you copy a generation that is created by someone else and that is why sites like this are good because you don't need to start everything from scratch since you can use an image that's created by someone else and remix it to create something more unique that is of your own or at least figure out how the image was created which model is used what loras is used and what kind of parameters we use as well and there you have it those are the three ways for us to generate an image inside tensor art and once again because it costs it gives us 100 credit on a daily basis and i've already used up up to 10 credit over here and have to say the art that i've gotten so far it is pretty nice so yep quite happy with the results that i get of course we can be better and dependent on the more times that you try and use this up then you are gonna get something that you probably like so give it a try and try to come back on a daily basis for you to fully utilize the 100 credit that's given to you every day so the credit does not roll over so i look forward to seeing your ai generator art in our ai forums and till next time bye bye